Hey guys, I'm Captain Dirk, and this is the Dear Vidits 2012 Part 10. Uh, in the last episode, I uh, talked a lot about uh, setting up your military to uh, train in squads and defend in squads. And, uh, well, that's actually working now. The, the, the Marks Dwarves are here on the ramparts defending and trying to shoot some, some nasty birds who are trying to attack my fortress, so that's nice. And uh, in this episode, we're going to equip the military. And that also means forging, so forging and equipping the military. And um, let's get started with that, since... Um, well, first, I need to explain more about that, since um, well, I have my military now. It, these are all these marks dwarves, and let's take a look at them. Uh, if I use V and uh, to go to them, then uh, I for inventory, I can see what this, what this dwarf has. And he has, um, well... Uh, a lot of fiber cloaks, cave spider silk, left gloves, a, le a sock, a silk shoe, and a chestnut crossbow, and water on his head since it's raining. But um, he doesn't have any armor. He has just normal cloth. He has clothes on. He yeah, normal clothes. And if a goblin attacks you when you're wearing normal clothes, they'll cut right through that. And um, we want to prevent that, and uh, because of that, we're going to uh, make some more armor. We're going to create more weapons. Uh, to do that, I'll need to yeah, handle a couple of things in this video, but they're not related. And well, my dwarves here are shooting any keys which are going outside, so this is all working fine. Um, yeah, fuck those keys. Um, so, so now we can start creating some stuff, and there is multiple stuff to do. And the cats are going insane in the next room. I hope you wait one second. Okay. Problem is that uh, dubstep is in heat. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's spring again, and it's a uh, fun time for all. First time she got, she got in heat. She's quite young. But um, well, I locked in another room. <laughs> Maybe I can record a video now. So let's do that. <laughs> Where was I? Um. Oh yeah. I was going to talk about equipment, and um, well, last episode I showed you as well how to make crossbows. Here is at the Bowyer's Workshop you can make some crossbows. Since normally you can't make crossbows, or at least you're unless you're making them out of metal. Um, for military, for for easy military changes, you can also uh, make some stuff actually at the Carpenter's Workshop. It's just the the military options for cheap cheap bastards. And uh, well, that's wooden stuff like wooden shields or a wooden buckler and training weapons, which also might be nice to have. So, you know what? I'll queue a couple of training weapons, two of each. And uh, that seems fine. There's even more stuff in here like um, these things. These are weapons. You could use these in, uh, in weapon traps, but more on weapon traps in another video. But probably need to do a special video about mechanics. Um, but okay, so this is the, the very cheapo uh, armoring for your dwarves. You can make wooden shields, wooden bucklers. That's always nice. And at the craft dwarves, you can also do some some cheap armoring stuff like um, with shell, if I remember. Yeah, shell leggings, shell gauntlets, shell helms. You don't want to abuse that too much, though. Even maybe if you have like tons of turtles lying around, but uh, normally you don't have enough turtles. And turtle shells are very important. They're used in some yeah, special crafts when your dwarves go mad. So don't use shell. Uh, don't make too much shell armor. Maybe you can make some some bone stuff though. Like well, let's try this. Make some bone leggings, greaves, gauntlets, and a helm. Why not? Um, so that's some very basic military stuff. And how it works? You just create it. It gets brought to your stockpile. And uh, any military dwarf who thinks he can uh, use it will take it. And well, I have like 20 military dwarves, at, it's 15 or something at least, let's check. Um, well, around 14 or something. And, um, but uh, like this, they won't. They, I created just one piece of shell armor basically, and that can only go on one dwarf. So I'll need way more armor and that's where forging kill comes in so we can do a lot of it and um, well, I guess we should really move on to forging um, first let me 
Clean War Dogs 2. No, let's uh, let's keep that for later in the video. Let's go and set up a magma forge. That's uh, what a lot of you are waiting for anyway. And um, well, down here, all the way down, this is uh, way way down in the fortress near the magma seeds where I, you know, I showed you in the previous episode where I dig dig two. I dug out some uh, rooms over here. Uh, this is the bottom level. This is completely the bottom level. Uh, this will be the magma shafts here, the magma will go through here. Here will be the forging level and here is an extra level for storage. And let's start setting that, uh, this up. Uh, well first thing I need to do is make sure these trenches here are actually filled with magma. And uh, to do that I'll have to do a couple of things and then, well I prepared for this. Um, as you can see I prepared these, these routes here. So top level here there is a stairway going down. And lot bone, lot, the lower level it goes down and goes into the trench. Now the idea is I'm going to um, open this tile later on. That will make sure the trench can be filled with, with magma. But when that happens the dwarf will need to escape. And dwarves are stupid. They usually run straight into the magma or, or they don't. Maybe they run away from it. The thing I found is that if you make them walk up a, chair, up a stair. They're basically always safe. So I placed a stair here, an upstair and a downstair on the top level. And uh, now I'm going to make it so the dwarf can't go through this path anymore. But he can, uh, but the lava can. I'm going to do that with the fortification. Just like upstairs. Fortifications, uh, the ramparts, they, they let water through, they let magma through, but they will not let the dwarf through. That's very important to know. You could also use a grate for this, but you need metal for that and just you can make a fortification out of stone so that works so well the color doesn't matter either. this this level so I'm going to make it out of diorite so yeah make a fortification here out of diorite do it here as well out of whatever and let's have those build also let's remove some of these ramps these will look ugly later uh, don't remove all since if you remove all there's a good chance you're one of your dwarves will get stuck there and uh, well, one dwarf will need to come and go do that job um, yeah and also let's hide some rock and start building some workshops on this level or maybe I should really open the magma first yeah um, no that'll work but <laughs> a dwarf needs to come here oh and to open it how I'm going to open it is with uh, engraving smoothing stone and carving fortifications so so like there's two ways to make a fortification like I showed you and uh, the first one is to just build it from the BC menu BC for the F for fortification and the second way is to smooth it from wall but it first needs to be smoothed and so I pressing D then S then selecting a tile and well here as well I mean, this one is a bit stupid since it's near here and there goes Irma. <laughs> but, uh, she's not in heat, luckily. She's fixed. Um, and that will be fixed before you guys ask. But uh, it's the first first in heat period, or whatever you call that. Crawls in Dutch. And, uh, well, a lot for later. Um, I'm getting off the point. Um, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to take one more tile here. And I'm going to smooth this tile. This will be the, the entrance to Magma Floats. Flows. And uh, I should have the stony tailor. I, I said a stony tailor in the previous episode, and since I had one very good one in uh, the dwarf therapist. Ah, and here the first fortification is what he built. Let's take a little look at it. It's a warm rough diorite block fortification. Ah, and the southern one being built as well. Uh, and a human caravan has arrived. More traders, this time the humans. Screw them for now. Um, uh, yeah, I want to do this first. Um, let's make sure this is smoothed. Yeah. And now a dwarf should come to smooth it. And wow. Um, yeah, here he is. That should be the one stony dated dwarf. Okay. Uh, yeah, the wall is actually smoothed now. He's going on to the next one. But now it's smoothed. I can actually use it to carve a fortification with A. D A. Select like the smoothest wall. And uh, it will be selected for fortification and it will turn red. And uh, I'm going to do with 
that with both. Oh, there was a cat in the walkway. It was very stupid of the cat. My dwarf should have no reason to get down here. You know what? To completely uh, get them out of here, I'm going to forbid all the items in this trench. So no dwarf will try to pick them up. And I hope you can't hear Depstep. She's in another room, but goddamn. Um, so also let's carve fortifications here. So all these rocks are forbidden now. Dwarves or animals should not go there. Here. Yeah, he opened the path and I hope he escaped. Yeah, he escaped. He walked upstairs. Now he's walking to here. Opened the path by carving the fortification. And looks like he died. God damn it. Did you... Where is he? He's not here. So he must be melted. <laughs> hmm. Did he just completely body melt already, or did it? Did he get away while I wasn't watching, or something? Now let's let's check if I set a tile to be smoothed like these. Is there a dwarf near? Which actually do the will do that command? No. I'm pretty sure he's dead. Um. Don't see anything here. Well, let's remove that smoothing command. This shit does need, doesn't really need to be smoothed. Anyway, uh, now the magma is flowing out into these trenches which I've prepared and, you know, filling eyes room and everything's safe for me. Uh, no monsters should. No, well, monsters can get into the lava through these trap doors since so. Let's uh, close these doors, these lower staircase. Last episode I used uh, a floor hatch, but. This time I'll use a floor so actually nothing can get through it. And uh, down here in the lower levels they can't get through it either since there's fortifications in the way. That's the nice double way, way of fortifications. Even if there's enemies which can swim in the lava, lava, they should not be able to get through a fortification. And uh, well, that should keep my forging place completely safe. Uh, let's see if there's any magma crabs around. There's usually magma crabs around. There's merchants around and wombats and a king snake, but no magma crabs. No merchants. Okay. Um. Oh, also, while I'm here, let's at least bring some trade goods to the uh, to this place. If I have some bins, which I don't, and this will take way too much time. So well, I have a couple of bins. That's it. Okay. Back to down here. Um. Well, they're almost completely filled already. That's because there's a lot of pressure on this magma over here. And uh, let's build some workshops now. Build, let's build a forge. Um, let's see. And that's... Um, well, the first option is the workshop. And actually, before I show you the magma forge, I should show you a normal forge. should show you both at the same time, probably. Um, to make things a little bit easier for myself, I'm going to start with the magma forge, though. <laughs> and I'll make a normal forge later. Oh, I have both. Okay, I'll do both then. Okay, um, here I'm going to start with the Magma Forge, the BWV, and also a normal forge, uh, that's with F. Uh, place that next to it, and uh, well, make an iron anvil as well. And, well, that's just one workshop. Why? No? I guess I press something too soon. Iron anvil, diorite, yeah, that was that's it. Okay, so that's the, the forge. There are the items will be created, but they'll need melt. They'll need bars first. They need molten iron. You can't just yeah, throw iron in, in, into the the forge and make a weapon out of it. You need to melt it first. And that's with uh, the B E menu. B E shows you to the uh, the furnaces menu, I think. Yeah, the furnace it's called. And uh, here you have a couple of options: wood furnaces, glass furnaces, smelters and uh, magma versions of them and uh, well for the magma ones the best the, the for economic ones you want magma smelters which well are placed on a trench like this this is why I placed it for the magma forge here the magma forge needs at least one tile like one of these green tiles doesn't matter which one should have a magma beneath it not on the same level that would be terrible but the level beneath it like this should have at least 
two or four of magma. Seven like uh, of six or like magma like I have here should be fine. So I'm going to make well a magma smelter, but I'm going to place it a little bit farther away. Uh, yeah, like this. And actually, I'm going to make a lot of magma smelters since I will need a lot of them. Um. Ah, this fits nicely, and uh, well, for the normal version, for the, the without magma smelting, let's show you that as well. Uh, you'll need uh, wood furnaces and smelters for that. So let's pick uh, a smelter, place it right here, and a wood furnace as well. And well, that's all the jobs you need for now. There's also glass forging, but there's well, that's made more uh, for trap making. Well, let's. Build them at least for glass forging. You just need a glass furnace, and I'm going to place glass furnaces all atop, uh, above, along this top row, since I want a lot of glass forging later. And uh, well, that will, will work fine. Um, now the shops needs to be built, though. Um, and yeah, the stone detroit has been missing for a week. He's dead. He's mean molten. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so yeah, my jobs, my dwarves, my jobs, my dwarves are already doing some of the jobs. Uh, let's set, let's take a look at the, the dwarf therapist though, since forging is very, very dependent on skill. And uh, let's see, let's change this to uh, to nothing for now. Change the the, the sorting for nothing. Press read dwarves to be sure. Seventy six dwarves now. Some done some stuff offline, and uh, let's sort by all these metal options. And if I double click all the options, it should show all the dwarves which have some skill in it. And for now, I have just one furnace operating dwarf uh, called Furnace and an or armor, yeah, which I selected the previous episode. And um, no one else has any blacksmithing skill, no, that's a shame. Um, okay, then. Let's set it back to Migrant Wave and select some useless dwarves, or actually I have a better way to select useless dwarves. Select this to current job, find the no job listing, here we do. And there's a lot of jobs which don't have a job, uh, dwarves which don't have a job even. And let's try and pick some of them here, um, which don't have a name or a... Uh, yeah, which don't have a name basically. And let's set a couple of them extra to furnace operating. I'll need lots of furnace operating. Uh, not the sword guys. You three, you should not be, you should be there. And some of these are children as well, so you can't see, yeah, you can't give skills to them. As, that's why they are, they're all idle. That's why I have so many idlers. Well, at least I now have five of them. Um, let's see if I can also find that furnace guy. Um, furnace guy, you are very important. Well, you should just be furnace operating all day from now on, nothing else. Um, armor, you can do the other stuff. For now, you know what? No, armor is going to be focused on armor, blacksmithing, metal crafting. I'm going to take one of these other dwarves. Like you, uh, take furnace spinning away, make him a weapon smith, and he can some do some black smith smithing and metal crafting on the side. Weapon smithing, armoring, those are the important ones here. Okay, committed changes. Uh, they're all into dwarf fortress now. And uh, now I should have more dwarves to do all these jobs. And problem is though, they'll need all to walk all the way down here, and probably with some items as well. Oh, and that's why I also milled a level up here. Let's hide the rock for now. It'll probably be gone later. And uh, let's make a nice stockpile here with stones. Not normal stones, but metal stones. Um, so let's remove that metal tile so we can see the stairs. And set the stone stockpile. And I'm going to just, just easily set this to metal ores. Not, no other types of stones. Just metal ores will now be dragged here. Okay. Um... We'll need those workshops done though. Uh, well, at least the floors here are done as well. So, yeah, everything should be completely safe now. And, uh, yeah, this isn't going fast enough, and especially if it not, isn't saving. I'll be back in a second. Okay. 
I was just about done with setting up the room, and uh, then this happens. A minotaur has come. A giant humanoid monster with the head of a bull. A minotaur. Um, well, <laughs> I guess this is as good a time as any to show how to raise the gates. And keep my dwarves inside, then well, hopefully they'll stay aside. Um, you know what? Let's do that as once. So I prepared this level like la last video even. And uh, set it up to all the bridges. And hopefully that command, all those commands went through. Let's try pulling it. Uh, so I can Q to it A and double capital P to do it. And uh, now... Yeah, it's changed to all now with the texture pack. And now all the bridges are raised. Yeah, it's nice even. Now, my dwarves can't go outside, but, well, nothing can go inside either. Either, And uh, my dwarves should be pretty safe. Uh, let's check what the uninvited guest is doing. And uh, he will ease beelining for my fortress, sort of. Probably trying to find something here. Uh, oh, a chick. <laughs> He's... Uh, it's a gosling, uh, a, yeah, baby goose, and it's dead. <laughs> but uh, well, he can't do much about that. But he should be getting shot by my military now. Yeah, you saw some darts flying over here, and he found a couple of dwarves. Actually, he found multiple dwarves. Fuck. <laughs> um, well, I could open the gates and maybe let these dwarves inside. I could also just let the gate be closed so my dwarves or the other dwarves are safe and well you see this guy he's slaughtering them all um, hopefully this yeah he's being shot though from the bot bottom top level here automatically and he's dead nice let's take a little look at that combat report um, alligator turtles uh, anyway what's he doing here he's charging a gosling uh, he collides with the soap maker. Anyway, he, he gores the gosling. Uh, gores the gosling, grabs the gosling in the right toe, scratches the gosling, blah 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 blah, charges at the soap maker. Um, he kills the soap maker, yeah, he punches the soap maker in the head with his right hand, losing the muscle. He, he punches him straight to his skull, yeah. And uh, that killed the soap maker. <laughs> Then he attacks a fisher dwarf. And he punches him, uh, bruising the upper body. He, the minotaur collides with the fisher dwarf. The fisher dwarf is knocked over and tumbles backwards. That's bad too. It might tumble back into the river. But then a flying alligator snapping turtle, a flying alligator snapping turtle bone bolt strikes the minotaur in the left upper leg, chipping the bone. Now that's not that important and. Well, here more darts are starting to fly into him. Here he attacking. He's uh, taking the fisher dwarf down by the second toe. Right. Minotaur gives into pain. Well, he yeah he's getting shot with all these uh, these arrows. And he punching the sw the fisher dwarf. The, okay. The fisher dwarf here. Yeah. So here the the, the minotaur gives into pain. He collapses basically uh, out of pain. And the fisher dwarf starts punching the minotaur and does nothing it bruises the muscle at uh, a flying alligator snapping turtle snake strikes him in the upper leg and more here the minotaur wakes up um, but yeah the fissure dwarves he, he falls again I, I, I had one good uh, bolt I guess in the leg or whatever but here is the killing shot. A flying alligator bleh strikes the minotaur in the head, tearing the muscle, uh, tearing the muscle, jamming the skull through the brain and tearing the, tearing the brain. A bolt went straight through his head and he died. And uh, yeah, the the, uh, the bolt is straight in the wound. Um, anyway, he's dead. Now I can open the gates. AP. That lever will be pulled. The gates. Yeah, the bridges will go down. And. Uh, all is fine again, and uh, well, the couple of dwarves who died will be brought to my uh, graveyard stockpile here. But let's let them do that. Uh, also, let's see if I can DBC some claims over here. Anything unclaimed? No. Okay, back to deforging then. So this room is done, and um, 
before I uh, go on, this room, this room, the, the wood furnace, if you build that in the normal wood furnace for normal forging, it, uh, it has a special skill. Not all dwarves have that standard on. It's the, the wood burning skill. It's found under not under metal smithing, what you'd expect for a forging operation, but it's found under farming. It's uh, the wood burning option, like this. And yeah, if you have problems making a wood furnace, make sure the wood burning option in farming is on. That's a good tip I can give you. And I already set this guy to make some charcoal, since that's how normal forging works. You take a log, you take one, one log from the stockpile basically here, bring it all the way down here or wherever you forge it. Normally it would be faster to do this next to the wood stockpile. Oh, sorry. Okay, stomach doing making weird sounds. Um, but um, okay, so normally you have the, the wood, you build it out so next to the wood stockpile. So it takes one wood, turns it into charcoal. The charcoal you can use to melt something else. And if I go to a smelter, I can go select something here like uh, Q and add an order. And well, I can select something to make here. There's not any good ores to m melt at the, at the time. Um, you know what? Let's melt some Galena ore at least. It, sometimes silver in Galena ore in silver is pretty nice. And um, well, you set it to be melted. Problem is each each Galena ore takes uh, one charcoal to melt if you use a normal normal smelter and uh, well that can use a lot so uh, one charcoal to melt one galena ore into silver or whatever else it was tin or something I I don't know but um, okay that's, that's step one so then you need to forge something with the ore you have let's, let's say I have something here uh, from silver I, if I want to make a silver mace that would take another charcoal to create this silver maze uh, together with the um, Galena ore with, with the silver which is well a bad uh, thing but you understand uh, every step of the way using normal outside forging takes charcoal so you have to make a wood furnace you have to make tons and tons of charcoal you want completely stockpiles filled with it but you don't have to do that that's why we have magma forging and magma forging just removes the need for charcoal it's you can just do it go to a magma smelter set it to melt gold or melt galena or melt sphalerite or melt tetrahedrite or whatever and uh, well, yeah, let's keep that for now and your dwarfs will actually start melting stuff like this and um, that's why I in I and most people prefer uh, prefer magma forging. Um, but there's something for outside forging, for normal forging, is that uh, I'm using charcoal now, and that's not that um, useful. Oh, and this, by the way, is mood. Uh, this happens sometimes. Something uh, a character gets a mood. He goes to claim a workshop, and if you have all the ingredients, he starts a mysterious construction, which will turn an artifact later. I actually had a couple and have not just not shown you on video. This is all I needed to tell about that. Um, these moods for this is um, shells are important. And you, if you want, um, uh, at this at this point he's already building it, so, so he doesn't need any more materials. But if you queue over it, he will say uh, random things about the materials you needed, like blocks or shells. It will show here if you queue over it when he has a mood. Okay, so fuck mood. Um, yeah, down here, someone is already starting to melt. He's a uh, he's a furnace operator. The mayor actually melting some stuff. Oh, and actually, I need more stockpiles. It's time for that bar block stockpile, which I have never actually made. And uh, well, let's place it next to all the smelters. And uh, well, it's just a normal bar block stockpile. I I could even make it even better, make it like metal only. You know what? I'll do that. No need to have coal or um, other blocks in here. So I'm going to just um, no, enable this B to block all, B to enable or permit metals. So only metal bars will be brought in here. And uh, well, when I have some metal, I can actually do something with that. Well, I've, what I want to tell you about is coal, which before I was interrupted by the, the mood guy. 
Uh, so in, for outside fort you normally need to chop down tons of trees and make wood, uh, make charcoal out of it. If you found coal in the ground, like by tumulus coal or lignite, you can use that way more efficiently. You can go to smelter and there's an option somewhere. Yeah, make coke from bituminous coal or coke from lignite. If you have it in your map, which you normally have with flux stones, which I should have maybe in the south, south bottom left, but um, we'll check that later. That will be way, way more economical than normal forging. Okay, so 30 minutes in, and well, here we have um, a toy axe created. It's uh, here, it's uh, a toy axe. And uh, it's nice, it's made of native gold. And uh, or, or there's an image of it in native gold about the nearing. But uh, not that important. Okay, so anyway, this is set. Now I have my dwarves melting stuff. And uh, well, this charcoal is not that necessary, so I'm going to stop that. This is just so you have an idea how to do it in both ways. And uh, um, the, the magma forges work the same, they just don't need coal. And here you can select things. You'll need the metal though, and at the moment I don't have much, I have a couple of bars here. And here's a good tip to know which, how many metal you have. If you press B, capital B, you make vertical bars. These can only be made out of metal, if you press enter. You can see here I have well, a couple of lead bars, zinc bars and copper bars. Let's try and make something out of copper, and press escape so I don't actually build the bars. Go to the uh, magma forge here, and let's make a weapon, let's make a copper... Um, well, copper mace is pretty bad. Let's make a copper sh short sword at least. Copper short sword, copper war hammer, copper. Um, uh, I want to rather have a silver hammer. Copper battle axe. Uh, battle axe and a pick. Picks and battle axes are port. Picks are for your miners. Battle axes are for your woodcutters. So make sure you have always build some extra picks and some extra axes uh, to be yeah doubly sure. Um. And there's more migrants, nice. Well, these can all go into the military later. Um, they'll need to sort them out themselves, sell themselves out even. Now it would be nice if someone could actually build the... or start forging here. Someone is on the way, but yeah, there he is. He is doing actually doing some stuff. Uh, with V it shows better. Uh, VG, he's forging a copper sword. Now he can make a sword. A sword even. And um, well, I could use this and create a whole lot of things from here. Basically, armor. I want whole sets of copper armor or iron armor. I want all these things, things like uh, like this. But I want multiple sets of them. I could do like this. Create a whole set of armor, basically, uh, with some extra things which I don't need. But this is a lot of fucking work, <laughs> and uh, there is an easier, better way to do this. And um, that's the managing option. So let's get on to the manager. To do that, we'll need the noble menu. And uh, the manager is an option there. Here's the manager. Let's see if we have one with actually skills in managing. No. Well, let's just set our broker then. Uh, he can do managing and broking at the same time. That's fine. Um, but the manager, before he will do anything, he will need an office. And uh, also, it's better to uh, let him not do any other jobs so I'm going to view him with enter um, let's see enter to now E to customize Y no can I go into his can I view him with C here no oh well um, then now I'm going to just build his room since that what's the manager needs is a room with a table and a chair in it so he can sit behind a disk and well, manage some orders. I'm going to do this in these little rooms I created here. These are supposed to be bedrooms but uh, well, this will be a little bedroom for him. This will be the manager's room. Let's uh, let's place that. I'll fill all, the, all these, these other rooms later. Um, let's have these dwarves build the items. Nice. Okay, well, let's build this ro little room. Build it out. Uh, make an object out of every. Make a table out of every, uh, a room out of every object, even. Since uh, a manager will probably want all. And uh, most nobles do actually. And well, now I'm going to use A to assign the bed to someone. Assign it to the manager. Same with the chair. 
assign it to the manager simple desk assign it to the manager this is now the manager's room press N now this requirement went from red to white and if I press enter yeah you can actually see it he wants this he has this uh, this is what he wants this is what he has so he, he only wants a meager office now but I, I gave him more than he wants uh, he needs <laughs> he needs a meager office but I also gave him meager quarters in the dining room that's what I wanted to say um, okay so with that said the manager becomes active and um, let's find him and remove all the jobs from him like I said earlier and uh, he should be somewhere in this list normally one of the purple jobs apparently not here's the mayor oh and here's straight at the top here for some reason okay see for him he is a legendary miner yeah he was one of my four dwarfs well that's too bad for him I want him to be managing for now that he really shouldn't do that. My, my miner do that but for now for the video it works I'm going to turn mining off I'm going to turn well, animal care can stay on hauling can stay off all the jobs architecture can stay architecture can stay on um, okay now he should be able to manage you know, he's doing a party now but uh, we can actually give some commands to the manager and uh, let's go back here for a second and that's with U and then M for the manager so U for the unit list M for the manager here we can give orders and uh, yeah, here with Q you have a whole list in this here you can be, have a list of all the things you can make in your fortress and uh, that's from collect webs to uh, press page down a couple of times encrusting furniture with all sort of stuffs forging picks uh, forging warhammers, constructing tables, so much stuff. The trick with this menu is to type in what you want. And, uh, well, let's do that. I want, um, well, that's some copper. Not that much, but for this. Uh, let's say I have a lot of copper. Uh, let's say I have 10,000 copper uh, lying around in the stockpile. And I want to make copper armor for all my dwarves, or maybe copper weapons at least. And uh, well, I type in copper, and I have all the options which have copper in it. It's automatically sorted. Um, but uh, well, let's uh, select the armors at least. And um, I know it starts here with the meal shirt, so let's let's start for, uh, with some meal shirts. If I carry copper meal, well, it goes to the top. Only option left. Make it. Uh, now I can select how many copper meals I want. Um, well, let's say I want 10 for now. Uh, the max for the one order like this is 30, though. If you type something higher, like 33, it will always be 30. And I don't have enough copper to do this, so I'm going to delete the order for now, just to remove it. But I get, I'm going to use this menu for something else. I'm going to use it to make uh, food creation easier. And instead of easy, I'm going to make lavish meals. Just give a whole lot of orders here, like lavish meals, and same with brewing drinks make a lot of drinks and uh, now we'll automate this okay and uh, you know, using this I can make a whole option I can do anything I can add more copper things I can create yeah tons of copper armor I can change I can make tons of copper stuff and uh, right. you get the idea I can <laughs> use this to create way more military. It will take some time to, to valid, for the order to validate though. Uh, let's see if my manager actually shows up. Probably not since he's at a party at the moment. Damn partying dwarves. He'll show up one time and uh, sooner or later and start managing jobs and then it will go through and these things will be managed out themselves. And the good thing is that the manager will send the jobs to these workshops so you won't need to do that anymore yourselves. And uh, I could remove all these options for now, because the manager will fill them later. Um, okay, that's enough about the manager. Uh, so that is basically what you need to start setting up your military. Um, yeah, what uh, didn't I tell you yet this video? Oh, the war dogs. Didn't do yet that. Um, so I did make the puppy stockpile over here, put a kennel in it, and well to train it let's train some more war dogs it's a w a w a w a w etc let's train some more animals let's see uh, 
if I have, actually have a dog which can be trained into a war animal. Yes, I have. There's a, a guy here now actually training war animals. And he'll, he'll train any puppies I have or any grown dogs, since a puppy can't be trained in a war, uh, war puppy. A war puppy, that doesn't work. Uh, you need a war dog. And, uh, well, he, this guy is doing that, he's training the dogs, and uh, later on I can assign him to the military. And, um, well, let's show you that as well. Um, I should have a couple of war dogs at least. Let's take, like, a military leader. Um, can probably easily find them with S, A, Z. If I pause the game, where is he? If I press Z, he is here on this tile. Okay, I'm going to V now to him. And uh, there's multiple people on this tile, goddamn. But here's the militia commander. I'm going to press P on him, uh, E for war dog, and I have only a hunting beast left. Did I never assign? I have a, a war dog left. This is also with the hunter which has the, the hunting beast from the beginning. Uh, so let's press R to assign also a war dog to him. And that's the idea with the older uh, dwarves. The smart thing is to make tons and tons of, of dogs and uh, assign multiple of them to the same dwarf. So I have like one dwarf with five dogs walking around him. That'll slaughter your enemies or that'll that help. Yeah, your dwarves survive at least since the dogs will attack the enemy and then your your dwarf can yeah finish it <laughs> and, uh, uh, go attack the goblin while the dog is keeping them busy and yeah hopefully keep the dwarf alive and since it doesn't matter that much if the, the dog dies yeah this, this dog is, dwarf food is not that, that uh, animal friendly Peter would have like a field day if they only knew <laughs> but um okay this is um this is working so far um there's one thing else I would do, wanted to do is that I'd make a melee squad, and I prepared that as well. Um, I could make a captain of the guard squad as well. Let's set that. Um, I like to uh, make a new captain of the guard. Selected some dwarves in the bottom here, gave them names. Um, yeah, like marks and hammers and spears. Um, you know what? I'm going to make the captain of the guard. I'm also going to make him the hammerer. Doesn't know if don't know if that actually works both ways. Um, should we, you be here? Or is he now like at the top of the list or something? Mm -hmm. Well, here, Hammer Govoslan, is that the same one? Yeah, it is the same one. Okay, so the same Hammer Dwarf is now the, the Captain of the Guard and the Hammer. The Captain of the Guard is basically the policeman, the, the police chief. The Hammer is the executioner. He will... Um, torture uh, vampires and stuff like that and he'll torture people but well, the chief of police can do that for now, the, the captain of the guard can do that for now. Later on you'll probably want multiple dwarves to for that, those roles. For now I'm just doing this. Um, so I said that. Now I'm going to create a squad for the captain of the guard and um, for this, this is going to be a melee squad so these are going to be, use metal armors. And now I'm going to add all these other dwarves which I selected and already named in here. Gave them, well, a name for which weapon they have. Um, let's see, axe dwarves and sword dwarves. This is a pretty mixed squad, but that's okay. Um, let's see, there's another mace dwarf. Another sword dwarf down here. I think I'm too. Marks, 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 sword. Oh, that's a complete sword, squad. And, uh, well, now the captain of the guard squad is said that's the, basically the police squad of the fortress. If a dwarf does something wrong, wrong now, the, the captain of the guard will automatically start yeah, punishing them. And uh, they'll go into jail and, well, more into that later. Uh, there's a justice menu and there are no criminals yet, but you'll have some in the future. You'll need iron chains for that. Also, I need to... Uh, yeah, uh, get rid of this body. <laughs> there's this body which is in the, um, the stockpile over here, but I'm at 45 minutes. Okay, that's the last thing I'm going to do. Have I have any burial receptacles? No. This is something I really need to know. Um, Okay, so I'm going to create some fast. Back to, oh fuck, this level. 
making it from a mason's workshop you can make a blah, 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 a coffin with P and if I wait a couple of seconds till that coffin is created you can place the coffin somewhere and yeah that will be used as a, a memorial it is, it's a coffin <laughs> you can bury the dwarves in that here's a dwarf actually creating some a coffin or I hope and once he moves away from that tile he should have it done and this just is <laughs> artificially <laughs> actually in the video too anyway in this video so far uh, you have a nice idea about file forging you have an idea how to get this started you have an idea how to set uh, give commands normally with the magma forge and using the manager you want to create you want to melt lots and lots of, of of uh, stuff here, lots of lots of you, know, yeah, bars to be melted, and uh, hopefully you have iron. Uh, I have not so far, but maybe there is some on the map. I don't know. But uh, well, using this you can create armor. You make sure you create tons and tons of armor, like yeah, ten types of each, or maybe thirty types of each armor, it's like thirty mail shirts, thirty breastplates, thirty uh, caps, thirty helms, and then if that's all done you'll have a completely uh, clothed military, what how you call that, armored military even, and an armored military will survive much longer than a naked dwarf, than a, a dwarf with clothes on. And uh, that's a very nice thing to have. Um, okay, that coffin should be done I think, yeah, at least one. Now I need to place it somewhere, I usually like to place my coffins in the mines somewhere. Um, Although it is very deep in the mines over here. Um, let's see. Here there's well, nothing really. And this is just the bottom of the mine. You know what? I don't have any good mining levels yet. Um, let's just take one of these rooms for now. I'll place this room, will be a burial uh, room. Place some coffins in here with N. Uh, yeah, N for burial receptacle. Let's place multiples at once. And once they're placed, we need to make the tomb. Oh, and here, by the way, you see the manager hard at work. He's managing work orders. And if I press UM, well, none of be validated, but that will happen. And uh, that'll work. Here come the coffins with the Q on them and the B. You can uh, allow them for burial. And that's enough. If you use, just leave it like this, uh, the dwarves will automatically well bury the dwarf in that coffin over there and uh, once the dwarf body is in a coffin it's completely safe it won't leak uh, miasma it won't rot it's in a coffin and, uh, and your dwarves want that because if you don't bring it into the coffin ghosts will show up and pester your dwarves but, uh, yeah that's really all I wanted to tell in this episode so everything's done you know how to create weapons and armor and forge now and uh, I haven't sh even shown leather working yet Letter working works nearly the same, but oh well. That'll uh, I'll do that in fast in the next video, I guess. Um, this has been way too long for now, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Later, guys.